Hi there. Welcome to my channel. I'm Diane and my channel is Seems Easy. Today I'm going to show you how to make a microwave cozy. You just put the cozy into the microwave and put your bowl inside it. Cook whatever you're cooking and then you can remove it without a pot holder and even hold it in your hand as you're eating. And it even works for ice cream. You will need the PDF file, which I provide in the description of this video. It's only one page and you can download it for free. Okay, here is your pattern. I will link you to my PDF that you can download for free in the description of this video. Now, you can either cut your 10 inch squares on a fold. It just would not fit all on one piece of paper. Or you can do what I did and just print two and tape them together at the fold line. That's really the easiest way to do this. So I've already got my squares cut, but I need to mark the darts and I need to mark the uh, top stitching lines. So you probably know how to mark darts, but I'm going to just show you one. You're going to mark the darts on your fabric on the wrong side. I'm just going to do these two at one time. Alright, so we've got our dart mark. You just mark all four of those. For your for your main fabric, you're going to need to mark this top stitching line. You're going to mark the top stitching line on the right side of the fabric because this is done last after the whole thing has been stitched. need to mark one one piece the either the main fabric or your lining fabric doesn't really matter now if this is you don't want it to be too bad but you just want to be able to see it while you stitch it but I have this in a big X from corner to corner and here is why this is what you were marking. And it just it just kind of quilts that the three layers together. Now, you're going to mark the darts on your batting fabric, but you're not going to sew them as darts and I will I'll explain what I mean in just a minute. Now on the the batting fabric We're only going to mark this V. We don't need to, we don't need that center guideline. Just the V. This one kind of is a little bit light, but I can see the, the perforations. You're going to cut these V's 
come out on only the batting fabric. I'm going to cut the V's out. Just set that aside. We're going to go ahead and pin our darts and then sew them. So you've got four on each of these squares. All right, now I have all four darts pinned on my main fabric. Now I'm going to pin my lining fabric. Okay, I have black thread in my machine because it coordinates with both of my fabrics. Now I'm going to show you how to do how we're going to do our pseudo darts on our batting. I'm using an elastic zigzag. You're going to start about a half an inch back from this V with your elastic zigzag. And it doesn't matter the fabric, the thread color, because it's not going to show. This is going to be the batting inside the whole thing. It will never show. Okay, and as you come up to this V, you're going to guide that the two pieces together and then stitch with this opening right down the middle of your presser foot. Do that for all four of them. Now we're going to press the darts and we're going to press them all in one direction. Now I'm right handed so I'm pressing them from right to left, but if you're left handed you can press them all from left to right. On both pieces they're going to be all pressed in one direction. Right now we're ready to put the right sides together. Now you see, on the main fabric, the dart is facing this way, and then on the backing fabric, it's facing that way. So you're going to line that stitch line up, and then it, it doesn't matter. You're going to put your batting fabric on the wrong side of one of them, lining that line up with your other two fabrics. And then you're going to just pin these three pieces together all the way around.
Now we're going to need to leave a, a little piece open to turn it right side out. And here's what I do when I'm pinning it. I will put two red pins or just two pins together and that's going to indicate my start and stop point so that when I'm stitching around here I'll come up to this I'll start here and go this way and then when I go all the way around I'll stop here and this part will not be sewn until we get ready to close it up when it's right side out all right so now we're going to take it back to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch a 1 4th inch seam all the way around this square starting at our double red pins going this way all the way around and stopping at these double red pins. Alright, so I'm going to be using this edge of my presser foot as the, with the edge of the fabric and I have adjusted my needle over to where it's going to be a 1 4 inch seam. And as I said, we're going to start stitching our straight seam at these two red pins. You always, always want to remove pins as you stitch. You don't want to stitch over pins. Just leave them in there until you get up to them and then remove them. Just take your time. Now we're going to clip our corners and you, you don't want to cut your stitching, but you're going to trim this off close to, but not touching that stitching. You're going to do all four corners. And this is so that when you turn that corner inside out, you don't have all that extra bulk trying to fold its way in. You would have a little knot there. Now we're going to turn it right side out and press it and then we'll do our top stitching and we're done. We're going to just turn this all right side out through that hole that we left open. Now here's our opening and what we want to do here is we want to turn this up under one fourth of an inch And pin that closed. All right. We don't really need to pin this all the way around, but you want to be sure that you can't see the other side either. You can only see one side. All right. So get that all the way out to the, the seam. Now we're just going to press it all the way around, get it good and flat. Alright, now I'm using glass head pins and they won't melt if I iron over them. But if you don't have glass head pins, you want to pin it 
this way. Okay, because you need to iron that right there and you don't want to melt the heads of your pins. Okay, now you can barely see where I use the tracing paper to make that line. We're first we're going to go all the way around the outside one eighth of an inch from this seam edge. We get it all the way around. That one eighth inch will close up this opening. Then, then we're going to sew diagonally from one corner to the other. Then turn it and do the same thing again all the way through and then we'll be finished. So we got our outer top stitching all the way around. Now we're going to start at the corner with our needle in the middle of our presser foot so that we can use this as a guide. Most presser feet have that. Now make sure that everything is flat. 